Welcome to True To Me Media's Smug Movie Reviews. Today's subject is 2022's Barbarian. Barbarian was written and directed by Zach Krieger. Barbarian stars Georgina Campbell, Bill Skarsgård, and Justin Long. Barbarian starts on a dark and stormy night in one of Detroit's roughest hoods. Our main character and hero, Tess, parks her car at her Airbnb only to find the key is not in the lockbox. She gets pissed and calls the property management company, only for her call to go straight to voicemail. Tess sits in her car while contemplating where she can crash for the night, and then Tess sees a light turn on in the house. Tess rings the shit out of the bell until Bill Skarsgård, who plays Keith, answers the door, all discombobulated. Tess and Keith talk and they discover they both have booked this Airbnb off different apps. Keith is introduced in a sketchy way so we think he's the villain, but he's an obvious red herring. Tess accepts Keith's invitation to stay because she already low-key knows she wants to sleep with him. Tess is so comfortable with Keith, she skips the tea and goes for some Pennywise wine. Tess takes the bedroom while Keith gets the couch. Tess wakes up to find her door open and Keith having night terrors on that bullshit sofa. This was a good way to display some suspense while showing Keith has been through some trauma himself and showing his vulnerability. Tess wakes up the next day for her job interview and finds Keith has already left like a thief in the night like they had a sleazy one night stand. Tess slam dunks her job interview until she ignores her potential new boss's concerns about Tess staying in Brightmore. Tess returns to the house and gets chased down by a lousy bum. Seriously, why would you even return to this fucked up house? Tess decides to fuck up the bathroom and needs toilet paper, but the toilet paper is in the basement. Of course. Tess gets locked in the basement because of a tricky door that closes and locks behind you. Tess pokes around and finds a string that opens a door to a secret hallway. She resists the urge to go in there at first, but ends up going in because this is a short ass movie if she doesn't. Tess finds a long dark hallway. Then she finds a room with a blood-stained mattress, a bloody handprint on the wall, and a video camera pointed toward the bed. Tess nopes the fuck out of there and bangs on the basement window. Luckily, Keith is outside and breaks her out. They go back inside and Keith is super intrigued by this sketchy room. In fact, he wants to go see it. That's a red flag right there, Tess. Keith makes Tess promise him she'll wait for him while he goes and checks it out. Tess ends up going into the secret hallway after Keith disappears in there. She hears Keith screaming for Tess's help in the darkness of the hallway. Tess goes to save Keith, but then a topless monster smashes Keith's head in for him. AJ Gilbride is in his sports car in California singing Ricky Ticky Tabby. The specific part he sings is about how institutions lie to you and tell you they will kill the snakes in your life. However, the singer then says it's up to us to kill our own snakes. The phone rings with some bad fucking news. AJ gets a call from his rep and he's told he's been me too'd and it's time to lose all of his shit, including the role in an upcoming television series. AJ is losing his cash, so he flies off to Detroit to appraise his property and sell that shit to get some lawyer money. There are signs that people are living in his house, or at least using it, but he doesn't care. He's there to sell that fucking house and get paid. AJ is so unbothered by the unclaimed possessions in his house that he goes parting with an old friend. While they're out, the friend asks AJ what really happened with his accuser. AJ says she totally wanted it, even though he had to force her into a sexy night with a walrus from Tusk. AJ fancies a trip to the basement and says he has a gun when he worries about not being alone in the house. AJ gets a little knife and heads to the basement. Instead of the topless monster, he finds extra square footage. Fucking score, bro. This is good for AJ as he can get some cash for the extra space. AJ jumps back in the hole and measures the obviously dangerous secret hallway, ignoring things like the stained mattress, video camera, and animal cages. AJ is completely self-absorbed and cut off from anything outside his character's viewpoint and ignores things that do not directly benefit him, even if they pose threats to his well-being. The only thing that grosses AJ out down here is a video on breastfeeding. The mother monster doesn't like AJ watching the breastfeeding video without her and chases him until he falls into a pit. Here we see Tess is alive and takes on a maternal role herself as she tries to calm AJ down. There is a complete tonal shift again to old school 80s deviant Frank coming out of his clean suburban house. Frank hits the store and grabs some baby things, diapers, plastic sheets, a breastfeeding video, among other things as the store employee just throws whatever the fuck in his cart. Frank sees a woman and scouts her as a potential victim. 
He throws on his finest Michael Myers jumpsuit with the Carlos name tag and goes to her house posing as a gas man or electric company employee. Frank goes to her house, manages to get inside, and unlocks a window when he is in the bathroom. AJ and Tess are chilling in the pit, and Tess goes over the movie monster rules with AJ. You gotta be quiet, and you gotta drink with her. The mother monster shoves the bottle into the pit, and it becomes clear the mother monster sees Tess and AJ as her babies. AJ ain't feeling breast milk, so the mother monster drags his ass off to be forcibly breastfed. Jess jumps out of the hole and runs off. She ends up breaking the basement window and escaping into the smelly arms of the bum. Tess wants to go back and save AJ, and the bum tells her to save herself. The bum says not to be around at night, and there are worse things in the house than the mother monster. Frank. He means Frank, by the way. AJ runs off from the breastfeeding and finds a bell with a rope that leads to a room that the mother monster looks afraid of. AJ goes in the room and finds Frank laying in his own filth, figuratively and literally. Tess stumbles to a gas station and calls the cops, but they are unimpressed with her story. AJ tells Frank not to worry, because AJ is the hero he has, but not the one he deserves, as he will call the cops and have them here in a jiffy. Frank realizes this will be bad for him once the police get a look at the Best of Frank VHS collection. AJ watches a Frank tape and openly condemns Frank, even though AJ did the same thing to someone. The cops take Tess back to the haunted house, and they don't believe her shit, assuming she's a common crackhead. This seems to be a commentary on class rather than gender. Is this a reference to the institution not killing snakes for you and how you have to kill the snakes yourself? Might be, since that's what Tess ends up doing. Tess goes back inside to save AJ and lures the mother outside. Then, Tess jumps in her car and serves the mother monster some drive through by wrecking into her. AJ scoops up Frank's gun and goes back into the maze. But now he runs into Tess and shoots her, even though she's standing by the best lit room and AJ's holding a flashlight. AJ peels Tess off the ground and they head to the water tower, with a mother monster in hot pursuit. Tess and AJ meet up with a bum, and the bum knows everything about the monster and the house and Frank for some reason. The bum spills the beans about Frank kidnapping women and keeping them confined as his sex slaves, with the women having babies and having babies with the babies. The mother monster is the result of that and is described as a copy of a copy of a copy. When it gets to the ending, it would have been helpful and better for AJ's character if he came to some sort of revelation. That way he could either undercut it or embrace it with his final action in the movie, which is lying to Tess about throwing her off the water tower and claiming he saved her, in order to position himself as a hero who was capable of saving women, not just hurting them. The bum brags about the mother not being able to break down his hideout walls right before she smashes up the joint and tears his arm off and beats his head in with it. AJ and Tess run up the water tower. AJ panics and throws Tess off the water tower so he can escape. The mother monster throws herself off the water tower, sacrificing herself to save Tess. This movie is hitting you over the head with the notion that women sacrifice themselves and men sacrifice women. AJ runs to Tess and claims she slipped and she let go, blaming her for falling. AJ once again not taking accountability for his role in hurting and using women. The mother monster comes back to life and pokes AJ in the eyes until his head gunk comes out of his eye holes, killing him. The mother monster then tries three times to pull Tess back into the house. There's a weird tonal shift here where the mother is shown in a sympathetic light and then Tess picks up the gun and blast the monster in the head. So what is Barbarian trying to say? We've got a lot of themes and a lot of concepts going around. What is the movie trying to say? After much thought and debate, we here at True To Me Media have decoded the message. Barbarian is demonstrating how men see women who are single. She's just a crazy lady living in that house. Over 40. She's been living there some 40 years now. And who want a baby. as monsters. <laughs> to wrap things up, Barbarian is a different type of horror movie. It starts one way, allowing the viewer to start making predictions about where we will end up. However, Barbarian does a good job with its weird shifts in tone and character focus. Barbarian takes risks and tries new things. That's the best thing about this movie. Barbarian is not a typical paint-by-numbers movie. It tries to break established screenwriting rules in order to give the audience a jagged story that keeps emotions high and asses on the edge of the seats. 
This should be applauded and respected. Movies that try new things are more enjoyable than movies that play it safe and are replicants of other movies. The final takeaway is that people should give Barbarian a chance. You will either enjoy it very much or it'll annoy the piss out of you. But you won't be bored. You'll have something to say when this movie is over. True to Me Media recommends you see this and post your opinions in the comments.